direct from Gray Street at Morningside USA. Please welcome our hosts, Jim and Lori Baker. Hello, everybody, and welcome. And thank you, Tammy Sue, who yes. is sitting in the audience right today. There. Nice to have all of you here in our wonderful audience and to have Dr. Hakeem uh, Collins. Hi is the founder of the Champions International in Wilmington, Delaware. He's the author of several books, including Command Your Healing. Dr. Collins is known for his accurate prophetic gifting and supernatural ministry. Yeah. He's a regular contributor writer for Charisma Magazine, one of my favorites, and The Elijah List. Dr. Collins' new book is Unseen Warfare, Rules of Engagement to Discern, Disarm, and Defeat the Work of the Enemy. That's right. Wow. So welcome to our program, Dr. Collins. We're so glad Thank to have so him much. here with us today. I, I, I'm going to jump right in, Dr. Collins. Great to see you. Uh, great to have you with us on the show and your book is amazing, uh, brilliantly written, brilliantly written. This man has a brilliant mind. Yes. Uh, Dr. Collins, before we get into your new book, can you tell us what you believe is the greatest weapon against the church right now? Yes, Pastor Jim. Um, one of the things that I know that is the greatest weapon against the body of Christ and believers today is ignorance. And so the Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, um, that God will not have his people ignorant. Um, and so I believe in this season, we have to break ignorance with truth of his word. Also, the Bible says that lest Satan has an advantage over us, God will not have us ignorant of the enemy devices. And so people perish because of lack of knowledge. And so I believe in this season, God wants to empower us with truth and revelation and understanding of his words so that we can defeat the enemy every time. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. Excellent. So good. Dr. Collins, you were not raised in a Christian home. Will you share your amazing story of how you came to Christ as, as a young boy? Yes. Um, well, I was raised in an environment that was plagued with drugs, violence, prostitution, in the city that I'm from in Wilmington, Delaware, it was a really impoverished area. I was raised in a dysfunctional home. My father was a Sunni Muslim, and my mother was not a believer at the time. And so just the culture where I lived was very um, plagued with so many influences, negative influences. And so being raised up in a, 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 a non-Christian home it was hard for me to understand or have any spiritual direction. You know, I, I would try to find direction with my father's faith in Islam, but that didn't have any um, effect on me. And so my grandmother actually, um, and I was at the age of seven, my grandmother um, basically did not want me to be a statistic, didn't want me to move in the path of the environment that I lived in. And so she invited me one day to a Baptist church. That's my foundation. And at seven years old, I was uh, sitting on the front row of this Baptist church, and my pastor at the time was a blind man, literally legally blind. And so there was something supernatural that happened where I literally saw a silhouette man standing behind my blind pastor who was preaching the message of Jesus about uh, repentance and giving your life to Jesus. And so with that encounter, God began to open up my spiritual eyes. Now, Pastor Jim and Lori, I wasn't even saved yet. I wasn't even a believer yet, and I'm having this spiritual uh, encounter. My spiritual eyes is open, and while my pastor was blind, naturally, and I'm seeing this actual silhouette man. And because of that encounter, and because of the preached message of Jesus, I gave my life to the Lord that particular day, and I never looked back. Amen. Wow. wow. Praise God. What happened immediately after you were saved? Was it uh, joy and peace, or did you have a time of adjusting to your new life. 
Well, that's a good question because right after I gave my life to the Lord, you know, I was on fire for God. I was a seeker after the Lord. I wanted more of that encounter that I saw with this angel or this being standing behind my pastor. So my heart was open for more of that supernatural encounter. And it, it is real today. And it was spiritual, uh, like an awakening for me. And no, my life didn't just become easier. Um, I actually became harder trying to adjust because it seemed like the influences in my environment increased where there was a lot of, you know, influences to take or do drugs or sell drugs or, you know, just being persuaded to do things that is ungodly. And so it was a hard adjustment. And I always say, Pastor Jim and Lori, that um, when you give your life to Jesus, you automatically become an open target of the enemy because the Bible says we are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the marvelous light of Jesus. And so you automatically become a target on the enemy's hit list. In other words, you are committing high treason against the kingdom or the kingdom or the darkness kingdom or the institution or the enemy's institution is what I'm trying to say. And so you become on his hit list. And so this is a season that I believe that God is raising up a people that know their God and would do great exploit and defeat the enemy at his war games. Yeah, so good. Wow. You know, your, your, your salvation was supernatural. I think all salvation is supernatural, yeah. but yours was supernatural. Right. And uh, seeing angels and the, the different things. And you are known as a prophet. You are known as one who prophesies as well <laughs> as being a prophet. Yes. And uh, you wrote about, uh, and in some of your other books, you wrote about spiritual warfare, and um, in this book especially about sp spiritual warfare. Are you on television? Do you have your own TV show or anything? Or what do you, uh, how do you, do you travel? Do you have a church? We, we need to know a little bit more about you. I love your book. Yes, and, and, me uh, too. Wow, I, I was I'm blown away. really introduced to you, and I know... You know a lot of my friends, <laughs> a lot of your friends are my friends, mm -hmm. and I'm just amazed by your writing. Yeah. You're brilliant, and oh, your yeah. mind is brilliant, mm -hmm. and your books is written that everyone ought to get your book, Unseen Warfare. If there's ever a book I need. Yes, I need it right now. If there's ever a book you today. need, everybody <laughs> here needs yes. this book, yes. Unseen Warfare, because we... We fight the war for every day, and we're going to get into this this book a little bit more because I need it. That's right. I feel like I'm the only one in warfare, but but I know all of you go through warfare, don't <laughs> oh, you? Oh boy! Yes. You know we go we through warfare, yeah. and and I I need some advice about how to get through it. Sometimes I just got back from my doctor yesterday, and then you know, I. My best friends are doctors now because I, <laughs> I go to the doctor so much since I had my stroke a year ago. But I'm doing better as far as I'm alive. I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yes, you That's are. You're I'm not alive. I'm you're not, here with us. You're live here. I'm not in dead. The no, you're not. I'm not dead. And if I was dead, I would be in better shape anyway. So... <laughs> So that's not even bad. <laughs> you oh, know. man. But uh, <laughs> there's the Jim Baker. That's the Baker sense of humor, so, everybody. Dr. Collins, forgive Welcome. me for rattling on, but just mm -hmm. can you comment on what I just said? <laughs> yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's okay. Well, you know, I travel ex extensively and itinerantly across the United States and abroad, just teaching people how to hear the voice of God, to teach them, to activate them into the spiritual gifts and into the prophetic, to not only hear God, but speak for him. We can speak for the Lord. And so I believe that, that my ministry was, yes, connected to hearing the voice of God and having these encounters. But then I began to experience a lot of spiritual resistance, opposition, things that were unseen that I didn't understand. And it's like, Lord, I'm a prophetic voice. You're raising me up to be uh, just uh, a mouthpiece for you in my generation. But why am I experiencing a lot of setbacks in my life? Why am I experiencing almost seems like invisible curses or oppositions from every angle? And so the Lord had to teach me 
how to overcome the works of the enemy and how to defeat him. And so that is why I've written this book. And so, yes, my foundation is teaching on the prophetic and healing and supernatural, but my heart is to really see believers break through in many areas of their lives. Yes. Amen. 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 Can I... Could I prophesy over you? I, I don't do this very often, uh, but Dr. Collins, I, I really believe you, you sh you're going to have a television program, and I will do something to help that if we have to, you know, but I believe that God has given you a voice. You have an articulate voice, and you need to be heard. And uh, I'm just prophesying that God is going to raise you up. Amen. Praise God. And, uh, <laughs> and, and use you on television as well. Wow. Because television is not just television. Television is the means to go to all the world to preach the gospel to Amen. all creatures. Thank and then when Lord. the end comes, I want Jesus to come back, don't yeah. you? Amen. Amen. That's why I believe in Christian television. Amen. Because millions and millions can see. How, let, let me ask you a, another question. How can we understand the unseen realm? Sometimes I feel like I'm not really adjusted to the earth. I sense supernatural things so much mm -hmm. that sometimes I feel like I don't belong right. I in True. this world. You know mm -hmm. what I'm Absolutely. talking about. Could, could you answer that? How, how do we understand a little more the unseen realm? Absolutely. Well, when I was, you know, seven, God supernaturally opened my eyes to that realm. It's not a realm that we can actually initiate on our own, but we can seek his presence. We can seek his heart and we can ask the Lord to reveal things to us and give us wisdom and understanding and revelation. And so because my heart was fixed to seek him more because of that one encounter of seeing that angel. It was the Lord that did it, but we can seek him. And so the unseen realm is as real or the spiritual realm or the invisible realm is as real as the natural realm, as me and Pastor Jim and Lori are speaking and you guys in the audience. I believe that we can tap into the unseen realm by the word of the Lord, by the truth. And the Bible says that a carnal mind does not understand the things of the spirit or spiritual things. And so we need the Holy Spirit. We need to be endowed or have the Holy Spirit indwell in us so that we can understand and discern and detect truth and error and understand that the spiritual realm is just as real as it's natural. That's right. So, so, good. so good. So right on. Some Christians are unaware of just how many of, of the, and this is me too, <laughs> so I'm going to throw myself in here to the day-to-day -day struggles are actually the work of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And what can we do to combat this, to combat them? You right, know what I mean? Yeah, to right. fight it. That's right. And, and win, because mm -hmm. I want total victory. Yes. yes. Amen. Because the enemy Amen. hates me. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't feel bad if the enemy hates you. You don't want to be on his side. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But he's a tormenting devil. Yeah. I need your advice on how do I combat this and experience total victory. Amen. Can I have total victory, do you think? Amen. Absolutely. We all can have total victory because, listen, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, it gives us the answer how to break or why generational curses or things that have been legal uh, against us where the enemy tried to uh, have a, gr a grip or a hold on us. The Bible says that in that passage of scriptures in Colossians chapter uh, 2, verse 14 and 15, especially in 15, where it says that Jesus disarmed the principalities and powers and has been nailed to the cross. But also we have to understand that there's an ongoing battle. There's an ongoing fight because the enemy is taking it out on you. See, Jesus already won the battle. But we have to understand that we are little 
uh, gods in the earth because Jesus says, haven't I called you gods? Basically meaning that we are spiritual representative. We are his spiritual offspring in the earth and the enemy is taking it out on us. So he doesn't like you, Pastor Jim. He doesn't like Lori. He doesn't like Mondo. He doesn't like every believer. And so he wants to fight us. And so the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 16 is our rules of engagement. It is to be strong in the Lord and, and in the power of his might. We are just to stand strong in that. And the Bible says not to resist them because we can't resist the devil. But I mean, excuse me, we cannot rebuke the devil. We can resist them. And so we also have the power to destroy the works of the enemy. And so in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18, it gives us the supernatural armor that God himself, it is his armor that he gives us as believers to wear. And then right after that, Paul, the apostle, concludes it by saying that we are to pray in the spirit. And I believe, Pastor Jim, that praying in the spirit, prayer is the the, the antidote and the power that will destroy the works of the enemy every time. Yeah. Mm, amen. 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 Wow. So you believe in uh, speaking in tongues? Yes, I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe that it will begin to build our faith and build us up in our Holy Spirit. And, and so I believe that it is a secret weapon uh, when we pray in the Spirit and speaking in tongues. Absolutely. Amen. It really yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Why is the ability to discern the enemy so low in the body of Christ in this hour? I believe it's because there are people that really don't believe that there are demons, that there are not angels, um, that tongues have ceased, prophecy have ceased. Um, there, there are these type of teachings that are out there that are really um, agents of the enemy or doctrines of demons or doctrines of devils and even doctrines of men. And so we have to come into truth. And so the Bible says that the word of God is uh, quick, powerful, sharper than any double-edged sword. And it has the ability to go down to the division of the bone and the marrow. But the Bible said it is the, the we need truth and we need the word of God. And so I believe if we understand our, our, our weapons, and we understand that the spiritual realm is real and that we can defeat the enemy. We don't have to worry about uh, any lie of the enemy or any doctrines of devils or doctrines of men. The word of God is the final truth. And I believe that that truth will always defeat the deceiver, the devil. Amen. 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 I love your book. Yeah. And uh, very, you know, you can Excellent. see uh, if you look in the edge of this book here, you can see that it's been all marked up. We prepare, our staff prepares. And uh, I read through your book. And uh, I, I love when I, isn't it funny? We love to read what we know already know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes. But we love the reaffirming of it, yes, I think, sometimes. Amen. But one of my favorite scriptures is over in Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Mm-hmm. I quote it all the time mm -hmm. that we are to study to show ourselves approved, mm -hmm. you know, work when it needeth not to be ashamed. But you you use here in this particular spot, at least, the uh, amplified Bible called the classic edition. I didn't even know there was a classic edition. I'm going to, whatever it is, I want a copy of it. Okay. So I, I, I'm going to start preaching. I'm going to use the amplified. Amplified Bible is a you know what's good about the Amplified? It's Amplified. That's right. It's excellent. It's like having Greek and Hebrew mm -hmm. amplification. It's mm -hmm. amplification. That's what mm -hmm. studying the Greek and the Hebrews is amplification. And, uh, but I, I, just, I just had to read this. Forgive me, Dr. Collins. Mm -hmm. But I had to read this for you and, uh, from 2 Timothy 2.15. Study and be eager... And do your utmost to present yourself to God approved, tested by trial, mm -hmm. a workman who have no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing, rightly the handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Amen. Wow. That's good. That's you powerful. Know, you need to study the Bible, wow. study. That's why I, I, I try to get you to read books. Mm -hmm. And this is a book I want you to read. Yes. This is so a book good. written by an intellectual 
man of God. Yes. <laughs> but Dr. Collins, this book is amazing and is it's wonderful, and, and, and you've got so much to say in here, and and then you. The, the next page, actually, after that, you're talking about praying in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I could just read your book. You know, exactly. Just, I want to sit here and just people. read for everybody because it's that excellent. But you're, what you're going to do, like me, you're going to love reading this book yes. because it's going to feed you. It yes. will. And I believe this book, honestly, Jim, and we can talk about it later as we go on with Dr. Collins and ask more questions and learn from you. But I believe this book right here, along with the Word of God, I really believe this book could set you free. What it can, can we... set you free from soul ties. It can yeah. set you oh, free. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. From bondages. Did you read that about yes. soul ties in there? I want to read the whole chapter for everybody, but you're going to have to get the book. It is, yeah. it's, it's like you said, Jim, that was brilliant. What you already know, but you have to be told again it. reinforce yeah. it i love what you talk about when you talk about the soul tie sim symptoms and when you look back when a person looks back at their life or i look back at my life i'm watching people walk through you know having soul tie tie symptoms yeah, what page is that that's page 316 so if you have your book turn to page 316 together no, but they no. can write it down and that's study right. it when they get it it's mm -hmm. a whole section on that that's right and um you talk about the soul tie symptoms and when you recognize those you're like wow and you can have soul ties with friendships that you made oh, sure. that are that are tight to you relationships of if, any you, kind. if you've had relationship with a lot of women or men you may have soul ties mm -hmm. to a lot of different people mm -hmm. in that way mm -hmm. and so please help us with that a little bit dr collins would you answer that Yes, you know, soul ties, that term soul ties may not actually be in the Bible per se, but the function is in the Bible. And so, you know, we know that God is a generational God. He's a loving God and he loves, uh, he's a covenant God. And so he put things or people together um, that their hearts will be knitted. And I'm reminded of when David and Jonathan, the Bible says that Jonathan loved David like his own brother or is like his own self. And so that was a legal covenant relationship. It was a soul tie established mutually. And so a soul tie is established. It can be established contractually, verbally, and even intimately. And so there are legal soul ties, but they're also illegal or illicit soul ties. And so we have to get rid of those illicit, illegal soul ties. And so you can build relationships in many different ways. And when your heart is knitted, then God begins to establish it if it's godly and if it's a divine relationship. And so soul ties can, um, uh, can bless us, but illegal ones can hold us back or hinder us. And it's like a knot. It's like tying your, 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 your shoelace together properly. But an illegal soul tie, I'll picture it as tying one shoelace and the other shoelace together. And what happened, you will trip over yourself if it's illegal. And so we must break illegal soul ties and things that are not uh, divine connections that God put together. And so God put Eve and Adam together. And so we must understand that it was a coven relationship through marriage. But anything outside of marriage is, a, is not uh, of God and it must be broken. Right. Wow, there's oh, so man. much in that yeah. chapter to there's read. There's so much, yeah. yeah you don't have to carry a lot free. of junk. That's mm -hmm. right. You say, oh, I get that from my old grandpa. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to get it from him. You don't have to have soul That's ties right. at all from your relatives or from anything. Dr. Collins, I want to ask you about the cover of the book. Can you explain it? Wow, well, that was a great question. I'm glad you really asked because I had a lot of warfare trying to get the cover on and, and the concept, but God gave me a vision, Pastor Jim, of what this cover should look like. Initially, I didn't want a dark cover like, you know, what you see. I wanted something bright. I wanted something um, more visible and glorious, in other words, but when the Lord gave me a vision in prayer concerning the cover. He, he wanted to really uh, give an example, an illustration of the angelic realm or the spiritual realm. So when you see these wings on fire, you're literally seeing, um, and, and, and we know that the angels are a part of spiritual warfare. 
And so I wanted to kind of give a contrast and illustration of the angels coming out or the angel wings coming out of or out of the um, spiritual realm into the physical realm or the natural realm. And it's on fire. And I, and I put that or wanted the fire of the wings because I wanted to illustrate that there was a, a, a warfare against, um, you know, the demonic force. And so I believe that angels, if I want to speak on that real quick, is that angels are a part of the believer's life to protect us and to help us to break through and to win uh, spiritual warfare. This warfare started in the beginning before even man existed. And so the Bible says in Revelation that war broke out in heaven, and we've seen the uh, Archangel Michael and, and the, the, the demonic rebellion, uh, Lucifer, and now formerly known as Lucifer, and now Satan, um, there was a battle and they were ejected out of heaven. And so the, the, this ongoing warfare is between now you, your soul, your destiny, your purpose, and you walking into that what God's called you to. So that cover is an illustration of angels fighting on our behalf, coming from the unseen into the scene realm. And so that's why you see that the way it looks. And I believe it's a beautiful cover. It is. Yes, it is, is beautiful. Amen. Amen. There's a whole chapter about angelic warriors of God. I mean, this Boy. is so powerful. Every single you, word. You said, you write that this is the season of spiritual warfare. Mm. How can we learn to discern when we are under spiritual attack? I'll tell you, uh, Mm -hmm. And there's warfare like never before mm -hmm. in America, in the world. Yeah. Right. I, I'm, I'm in America, so I always say America. But, but the whole world is under spiritual attack. And we must be winners in this thing. Yes. I want to defeat the enemy. I'm Amen. tired of being downtrodden. I'm tired yeah. of what we see in America. And the church is believing a lie. Churches that used to be on fire for God are believing the lies of politicians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're listening to politicians instead of the living Bible. Amen. Yes. Well, yes. Amen. Can we learn to discern when we're under spiritual attack? Absolutely. I always say that what is in the, what happens in the natural realm is an indication of what is happening or the activity in the spiritual realm. And so when we look at even last year in 2020 or in that year, we see the political landscape with the election and how all of this warfare and all of this resistance um, to bring forth what God has ordained and God has said. We can look at the pandemic, this coronavirus that has been sent, this plague, um, um, just the even economic uncertainty. It was all rolled out at the same time, even the civil unrest. It, there's a shakening, I believe, Pastor Jim and Lori, there's a shakening that's going on, and this is an ongoing battle. It is not just in America, but around the world. We can even see this conflict, this spiritual conflict with, the, um, with Israel and what's going on even now. We're going to begin to see a shakening that is taking place right now prophetically. And so we can arm ourselves with truth. And you said it, Pastor Jim, it, 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 the Bible says that the enemy comes, he's the God of, or the prince and the power of the air. He comes to what? Blind unbelievers to keep them from, from receiving the truth of the gospel of Jesus. And so that is what he's doing in territories and in, 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 in regions and places around the world. And so we're seeing this heavy resistance. But I believe that even there is even though there's opposition, it is an opportunity for the body of Christ, for the church to rise up and be that powerful voice and be a weapon a war in the hands of God to defeat uh, error, to defeat demonic uh, forces. And listen, this wrestle that we're going through, this battle, it's a spiritual battle. It is not a natural one. It's not against flesh and blood. And so I believe that we can arm ourselves to discern and disarm and defeat the works of the enemy every time with truth and with the Spirit of God. I believe this is a season of, yes, a warfare, but I believe it's a season that we will get the spoils of war we will get the spoils of war because the Bible says that how can you go into a strong man house unless you bind the strong man? And Jesus is the stronger man. And I believe that the Amen. church must rise up as that bride, warrior bride, and do great things. Wow. You mentioned the yeah. prince of the power of the airwaves. This is the thing you got to understand. Yeah. When we take over television, mm -hmm. which we've done since I was a boy, mm -hmm. I started with television. Right. And... 
It is warfare. Mm. And you're seeing the attacks come against Christian television and Christian radio. Mm -hmm. But those with a voice. Because the devil is the prince of the power of the airwaves. He doesn't want to give up his, his, his airwaves. And so it's, we have the power over him. Amen. And we must move now. You use the term rules of engagement to discern, disarm, and defeat the works of the enemy. What does rules of engagement mean? And can believers actually defeat the enemy? Yes, rules of engagement is a military term or is a military action that the soldiers, when they're using their force or they're um, um, deploying or initiating their weapons against the enemy. So rules of engagement is the guidelines and the limitation of what they can and cannot do. And as believers, we understand that Jesus had already disarmed the enemy, but we also have the power, according to Ephesians chapter 6, and we just read it, we can understand that we can be supernaturally suited and armored, and we can stand and in the power of, the, of God, and we can defeat him with the, uh, with the weapons of warfare, which is a spiritual weapon that destroys strongholds. So yes, we can win this battle, and we can checkmate the enemy every time. We've been playing checkers too long. But I believe that we must rise up as a church and have strategies to be able to disarm the enemy and be able to know what the enemy is up to. Know your opponent, just like in chess, knowing what the enemy is thinking and not fight always defensively, but we can fight offensively being prepared before the battle, not just in the battle or after the battle. So I believe that this is going to be a season that we're going to see the church rise up as a great and we're going to begin to get the things that the Lord has for us. Amen. Amen. Wow. Praise God. I want you to get this book, Yes. Yeah. Unseen Warfare. I want you to have it right away because this is a handbook yeah. for now, Mondo. Yes. Absolutely. It's now. Mm-hmm. It's coming now, Lori. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And this, we're in this war, mm-hmm. and this is the Unseen Warfare. And how many know... Unseen warfare. You fought unseen warfare. <laughs> Everybody. Like, even in the middle of the night, sometimes you fought <laughs> an unseen warfare. Oh, yeah. And we, this book is the best that I've read about it. It really is. I agree. It is. It's, it it's, identifies. It's you know what it helped me identify? I lived for so long on survival mode, mode emotionally. Mm-hmm. That meant that no wonder relationships didn't last long. Mm-hmm. No wonder I couldn't function in society. I was always in survival mode. Mm-hmm. And I want to tell you something. One of the keys to identify was when I met the two of you, you guys began to talk about the battle is in the mind. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand it then. If you didn't raise your hand on the question that Pastor Jim just asked, to help you identify the exhaustion that we feel and the spiritual battle that we don't see happens always in the mind. Mm -hmm. This is what Dr. Collins helps you understand to identify. On page 79, it helped me understand why I go to sleep and I get up and I'm exhausted and I'm tired. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Wow. You got up every morning, you get up every morning, and you tell me, I'm tired. My mm. mind has been working. I'm, mm. I'm already, I have already been working in the, in the middle of the night, That's right. in my dreams, and my visions. And this is the identification of what that realm looks like, the unseen realm. Mm-hmm. The greatest form, this is uh, Dr. Collins writing right now, page 79. The greatest form of spiritual warfare is when the enemy counsels you, in your mind. In other words, the war strategies of the enemy against God's people are mind games. A lot of you have been played by the mind games of an ex-wife, an ex-husband, your children, your society. The Bible says in Proverbs, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The battle takes place in the mind. So he writes, God's people are mind games, which are weapons or warfare against you. Mm -hmm. The enemy's first playground to defeat you is in the mind. Mm -hmm. Daniel talks about the season that we're in right now. He's trying to wear the saints out mentally, Mm -hmm. the Bible says. No wonder there's exhaustion in the body of Christ. You, Dr. Hakeem, what... uh, 
country does your father and your mother come from? Sure. Well, my parents are literally from the America. Um, my my father is a Muslim. He's been a devout Muslim for over 40 years. Um, he's deceased now, but um, one of my prayers was that the Lord would save him um, and give him that opportunity. And so the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so that was one of my prayers. And so on his on his deathbed, basically, um, he called my pastor and my sister and my brother, who I, I have a twin brother, and they began to pray for him. And I believe that he gave his life to the Lord because two days later after he, he rece- um, had them come, he um, transitioned. Um, and so what my point is that I was raised in a poverty stricken place like Mondo. I was in gang activity. I was just just a, a, just a rejected uh, young guy just trying to find my way, even though I was saved. And so that was the warfare that I had to go through. And so my mother now is a believer. She is saved. The Bible says if he saved you, he'll save your whole household. So even though the warfare was there, but the victory is already won by Jesus. And so my family is saved. And also um, I, I have a twin brother. We are known as the twin prophets and we minister together and, and just teaching and helping people to hear God. And so my upbringing was not really good. But God has taken my my story, my my background to empower and to impact many people around the world. Amen. Wow. Wow. Do you think uh, maybe we could get you and your brother to come and be with us for a conference yes. here? Yes. yes. Wow. How <laughs> honored to come. Yes, we'll come. And you can. You don't have to preach fast here. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I like your preaching. But I, I'm just saying that on my show, people are so used to being on shows that have, you've you, you got three minutes. Sound bites. Sound, sound bites. That's what Lori calls mm-hmm. them, sound bites. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and me, I, I want to hear the truth. I want to hear the whole thing. I, I, I'm, I don't want just a sound bite. I, I want it all, you know, because I read your book. <laughs> and I want everybody to get this book. We have one of the books available for a $25 offer to the ministry that includes shipping and handling, Mm -hmm. or we have three of the Unseen Warfare books for a donation of $60 to the ministry. And we've just put together, because Dad, as we were talking about this, I said, we have to have a baker's dozen of this book, which means you'll receive 13 of the Unseen Warfare Rules of Engagement Mm. to discern, disarm, and defeat the works of the enemy 13 bucks for a donation of $215 to the ministry that will also get it to your home. That includes shipping and handling. But one of the things that I love, Daddy, says you're going to learn about generational curses in the Bible and gain practical insight on breaking family curses. As we mentioned, break free from ungodly soul ties and harmful patterns from your past. Grow in the spiritual gift of discernment to detect places in your life where the enemy is at work. And as you guys have said, we all, every single one of us, we all can benefit from understanding the daily unseen warfare that we're all against. We all, we're all experiencing it in our daily lives. And as believers, I believe, Dr. Collins, you are being raised up to equip us because many times the question that comes from many believers is what do we do? How do we fight against this? What are the weapons of our warfare? And you're doing that. You're equipping us. So I thank you. I believe mom as you said Mm -hmm. this is going to help many people Mm -hmm. are going to be set free through your book that has been inspired by the holy spirit why did you so good why did you offer a baker's dozen because we don't offer baker's dozen on every book that's right you know that's right. I did. As we were sitting here, you know, and mom said it, the very thing as I was, as I was thinking it, you know, I just felt the Holy Spirit say, this is going to set people free. You know, many times you're dealing with things in your life. I know even, even today, literally, it was so unbelievable. As I was walking out, heading to the studio, I stopped. I sat in my car and I said, I break. I've been through breaking generational curses in my life. Right. You guys have done that. You've helped me walk through that process. But that is a daily thing that you have to do, especially in the days that we're living in, because the enemy will try to remind you and try to, try to utilize those generational curses against you you. Mm-hmm. And so even very today, I sat there and I said, Lord, I ask that you would continue to break 
free, break me free from any generational curse that the enemy would try to bring back and use against me and try to attack me. Lord, mm -hmm. I break free from it. I That's take right. control over that authority. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I take authority, yes. And so, Dad, I believe this message, Baker's Dozen 13 books, that is going to, to equip you to help people help set yes. people free. Everybody Absolutely. needs this. I'm not kidding. I know you guys hear us say this often, yes. but I'm reading this and I'm like, I'm just like blown away. I couldn't stop reading it. And I, and I, I love you talk about, uh, so, I mean, I don't want to get off the, to your, help your people. questions, but yeah. to help people. You're absolutely but right. The weapons of warfare, you go into Ephesians, doctor, mm. you, you literally break it down in Ephesians chapter six, you go through it all. It is excellent. You show us how to put all on right. the breastplate of righteousness, how to put on the belt of truth. You explain it all Amazing. in detail. And then you share with us, and that's what you're going to get. And then I started going to the soul ties, and I'm like, I don't know so many people right now, including myself that has been through so much yeah. and worked hard about soul ties but, and worked hard on it throughout the years and, um, and took authority and broke soul ties yeah. that, are, are, that were sent by the enemy. But I'm, I'm talking about believers, Christians, so many yeah. that are, are just locked into soul ties and relationships. And if, if you didn't get it for anything else, you need to get it just for this. And you're going to benefit from every, every part of this. And book. activate it. I, I, listen, two second story. I walked into a house yesterday. I got a call on Friday that one of my friends committed suicide on Friday. And I was, we were nemesis, to be honest. He was from a different gang. We didn't get along. And we met up one day. We made peace with each other. True forgiveness is from the heart. And we learned how to live together in a small town here in Branson. And we made peace. We became friends. He knew me as the praying man. And he battled mentally with issues of soul ties that drove him to suicide. This is how oh, real no. the spiritual warfare is. I'm glad I got a hold of this book a few days earlier because mm -hmm. it, uh, it helped me walk into the family's home yesterday. Hmm. The father sitting there in tears, the sister sitting there in tears, his brother sitting there in tears, his older boy, 17 years old, in tears. And I walked in there knowing the spiritual authority that God had given me and placed over my life to walk in there and bind and break the generational curse that was yeah. put in that family. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, people are depending on you to be spiritually strong, yeah. spiritually engage in the warfare because what people are battling is life and death. Yes. And I'm telling you, if we don't have the activation tools to walk into someone's home and declare victory, Amen. Yes. then we're not living the way Dr. Collins is challenging us to live according to the scripture. Mm -hmm. This young man, dad, I bumped into him at the gas station a year earlier and there's two things he wanted to talk to me about. Now, the funeral is going to be big. There's going to be over 2,000 people. That's how much influence this young man had. But two questions he asked me that he wanted answers on. One was, can I be saved? <clears throat> Number two, can God hear me? In the middle of a gas station, I began to pray with him. We nailed down at a gas station that spiritual warfare being broken over his life, yeah. over his kids, over his family. But I'm telling you, what you guys are talking about, soul ties, I experienced it once again yesterday. Soul ties can drive a man to commit suicide. Soul ties will drive a man to walk away from his family. Soul ties can literally, I've seen men and women walk away from the ministry because they can't get rid of that soul tie. But it made me think of Bob Jones Prophet Bob Jones walking up to you, Dad, and I yeah. believe, this is my opinion, <laughs> okay. that the only reason, one of the only reasons, Dad, you're sitting here today because a man of God walked into your life and said, excuse me, I got to break that soul tie if you're going to continue to be ministering around the world. Amen. I don't know what it is about soul ties, Amen. but you read it right, and I think that's one of the keys that in order to move forward, and the reason why Jim Baker sits here on television coming to your home was because this prophet walked in 
I don't think he could would have married you, Mom. Right. I don't think oh. he could have gone any longer Absolutely. because that's how deep that soul. Do you remember that day? Because one of the reasons we really booked Dr. Collins, I'll be honest with you, was because he wrote about soul ties. Yeah, and he explains really? it. So, so, you know, here's, here's a part of what you're going to get since we're on this subject. This is what Dr. Collins wrote in his book. If you want to turn, Nana, you can, to page 316. Order the book right Order now while right she's now. talking. right now. You're going to love this soul tie symptoms. This might be you. What are soul tie symptoms? Soul tie symptoms are usually what a person feels, thinks, and is emotionally moved by the person after a particularly intense relationship ends. Soul ties, depending on how long the relationship or connection lasted, can cause withdrawals. The soul time symptoms can impact a person's mind, will, and emotions long after the relationship has ended, even years later. Soul tie symptoms can cause an erate, erratic, and spontaneous mood swings attributed to past or present relationships. I got to ask Dr. Collins oh, something on that right a, now. That's just a little tiny bit. That's a few sentences, guys. If, if, if you're constantly reminded of your past and of sin and, and other things, could that be soul ties, doctor? Yes, absolutely. It can be a soul tie because... We look at it, it's a soul tie. And so, your, you know, the soul is the seat of your will, mind, and emotions. And so that is where everything is, or the hub, everything is connected to. And so if there is a, a connection to uh, drugs or a, a lifestyle of the past, and if you haven't got deliverance and you have not broken those things, you have not severed it, then you will go through these mood swings, these withdrawals that Lori talked about in the book, those are the things that we have to begin to break. And so past sins that is unrepented, things that uh, we may not even um, aware of, because the Bible says he will not have us ignorant. We have to make sure that we break it and, um, and move forward in, victor in victory in Christ. What if the, uh, you're reminded of a of sin you put under the blood years ago? Yeah. What if that comes back and haunts you? in the middle of the night or something. That's not necessarily a soul tie, or it could be. I don't know. But you can take authority over that. You don't, if the Lord says he doesn't even remember it, so why should you remember something? He says, if I've forgiven you, I have forgotten your sin and buried it in the deepest sea of my forgetfulness. Amen. 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 The Amen. From the <laughs> well, you know, Pastor Jim, you know, what happens is oftentimes we we have to know the truth. And so Jesus already nailed those things, generational curses, uh, those things that we have already um, repented of and we confessed. And so it's already nailed at the cross. But then oftentimes we can find ourselves remembering those things or pondering on those things or those past things of the past. And so what you do is you have to cast down those vain imaginations and you have to make it come subject to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And so when those things come up, there's been times, even myself, I've, I'll be in prayer and intense worship and something will come to my mind. That's a stronghold. And so it's not a soul tie because it's already, God has already forgiven me and he's already forgotten it. So we must sometimes, but the enemy comes to remind us and try to, because even our physical bodies, the flesh, the Bible says, do not put no confidence in this flesh. So the flesh has a memory. And so, um, but we have to, that's that war, that tug of war with the soul and the flesh. And so we have to break those um, illegal patterns. We have to break those mindsets. So those are strongholds. So we just cast those down with the truth of God's word, and we'll be able to see victory in every area. Amen. You have a section in here, how to guard your mind on the battlefield. That's what we're talking about right here. Guarding your mind, staying steadfast, you know, your, your thoughts and all of that. But I want everybody to order so this book today. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's called Unseen Warfare. So and you're in it. Yes. If you're like me or like all the people in this room, how many have warfare at times? Raise your hand. The others are lying. <laughs> <laughs> They're all telling the truth here, I think. Yeah. The warfare. And the warfare is in the mind. And that battle and that, that mind, 
You know, if you think on things, they'll begin to happen in your life. And you don't want that. Amen. 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 Lori? That's right, Jim Baker. <laughs> you, you've got... <laughs> No, Just you're, remember, ho- you're standing remember there opening. What, that's you're, because every every time I turn to another page, it's just so incredibly. Are you going to read the gifted. whole book? To I, it? Absolutely, I would love to be, but I think everybody needs to get this book, underline it, let it go, go yeah. to the places that where you are today and what's yeah. going on in your life. And um, Dr. Collins has put it so well, articulated it so well. I'm going to have him come back tomorrow. With the word yeah. of God that completely can you, He can come back tomorrow, he said. Yeah. Yes, sir. You heard him say uh, that? Yes. yes. Okay, so quickly, we're out of time, and uh, I want everybody to order the book That's right. today. Yes. I want you to get it and be the missionary. I had thought about something I wanted to talk about earlier, and I need more time today, <laughs> but I, is there some way that you could print up a card of some sort that when people order the baker's dozens from now on, that they become a, a missionary of this ministry? Yes. And, Amen. And I love that. that. Yes, absolutely. Yes. They have a, this, it says that they're a missionary yes. and that they are a credentialed missionary of this ministry, that they're, they're passing these out. Because here's the thing. If we can get people to pass out right. the baker's dozens from time to time. Yeah. They're, they're, that's 12 people they've affected. Yeah. 13. That's right. Well, or one, or one they for keep themselves. one for themselves. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to keep one for yourself. Yes, make sure so, you do. But, but think of it. That's right. Here's the thing. This book takes sometimes years to write a book like this. And you're being able to give somebody something that is tr- totally, not just a sermon. You, it would take hundreds of sermons probably to preach everything that's yeah. in this book. It's absolutely this, amazing. This is giving them a complete message. Mm-hmm. And this is one that will set them that's free. Right. right. And it gives Amen. you the tool. Yes. So right. I want, yes, really and do. I'll sign the card yeah. that it says there, this person, something they could put in their wallet mm-hmm. size card maybe. I love that. But that they're yes. a mis- missionary of this ministry. Amen. And you've always wanted to be a missionary. Well, you're going to be a missionary. <laughs> Amen. And, and a lot of you already are you because really you, are. All, you get the baker's dozens right. and you, you pass them out mm-hmm. to people. Yeah. And what a wonderful gift that you've invested mm-hmm. a few dollars into somebody's yeah, life and you give right. it to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, so get this book to them. Uh, I wanted to just share the three main war strategies <laughs> that are against believers and, and what they are and how we can overcome them. But we'll start tomorrow with that question, yeah. okay? Uh, and that, that'll be our question tomorrow because I, I'm out of time. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just, uh, uh, Dr. Collins, so happy to, to have you here. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to your twin brother and you coming oh, me to too. Uh, yes. Great. our I conference that. yes and uh i need your help people uh we're 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 not struggling uh, well we're always struggling uh, life is a struggle because you just do you just do there was warfare because satan hates us did you know that he yes. hates it. <laughs> right, but and God and we're greater. we're winning though. We yes, we're, we're still here. Yes. Yay. Look at what we're on this platform. Look at what we're doing. My last book I wrote, I'm still standing, is the book's gone because they decided they didn't want that title. <laughs> but and uh, only the publishers can tell you they don't want a title. And uh, I'm still standing, but you can make it's my new book that's gonna come out anyway. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I'm still standing and I'm telling you what I've been through this last year. Yeah. Without the word of the living God, I couldn't be here. That's right. Amen. Amen. I would have died. I mean, I, I, I mean, I just given up. <laughs> and uh, I'm just telling you, people, you've got to be able to stand on the word. Yeah. And that's all I have is the word. And and if if, if I die. 
I die. Then I go to be with the Lord. So that's even victory for a Christian Amen. to be right. with the Lord. Yeah. But we, we need to get, we're a little behind in, in our uh, uh, stations and, mm -hmm. and it, just a little bit, a few, few weeks, and we've got to stay caught up. Because yeah. if we get behind, then it's like an ocean. It just covers mm -hmm. you up. Yeah. And we, we've, we, the miracle is we have a potential audience of a billion, 600 million viewers. Incredible. That is beyond comprehension. Yeah. For somebody who was wiped out, somebody who lost everything, and I'm back bigger than ever. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't mean I am, because I'm smaller than ever, I think. <laughs> My new theme song is Old Man River. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm Old Man River. Okay. But I keep on rolling. <laughs> I keep on rolling along. <laughs> Anyhow, we've got to go. And I'm, but I'm putting out that SOS, yes, Marcella. That's right. And uh, we have just a few of our, this is my best Bible I ever made, I think, the Restoration Bible. It has the pictures in it. It, it is, is, is giant print right. and uh, just everything. Because it's got everything in it. Red letter edition. It's just, it's just one of the greatest Bibles. And you get that basically free. Yes, that's right. If you order for the $150, the Revelation SOS, that means save our stations, not right. save our ship. <laughs> we don't want the ship to sink. But That's you'll right. get my revelation teaching, which we're trying to, this is another, if you got one, you just get this mm -hmm. set and give it to somebody. Yeah. This is a missionary offer. Give it to somebody as a gift. And uh, this Bible's worth uh, almost what, the whole deal is because that's what I think originally, I don't know what the we offered it for. hundred dollar donation originally. Was that originally a hundred dollars? Yes. yes. Okay. So you get the Bible free. You get two sets. Yes. The revelation revealed is a hundred dollars. You get a second one for $50 and then you get the free Bible. Yeah. How's that? That's yes. a good Excellent. deal. Yes. yes. I love And this. so that's, uh, that's two about $300 worth of value for a gift of $150. Yes, that's right. And that's our SOS, Save Our Stations, okay? Amen. Please, please give that special offer yeah. today if you can, mm -hmm. and that will get us caught up this month. That's yeah. right. You can go to our website, jimbakershow.com, or you can call us at 1-888-988-1588. Don't miss tomorrow's broadcast. Dr. Collins will be back with us, and we'll start with the three main warfare strategies against us that we can defeat yeah. in the yeah. name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Collins. And remember, God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for today. Bye-bye. We love you.